explore our videos and teachings up on YouTube. And actually, we have a, 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 a large following on YouTube and uh, get good response. Um, and so we thank God for the opportunity we have to not only minister to those who are here in the sanctuary, but to those around the world. And it's, uh, I think it was back in 1990. See, I began to do TV broadcasting in 83. Uh, my son Daniel had just been born. And I was coming down from a time of prayer upstairs. And as I came down, it's hard to believe this. I came down a set of stairs and I heard the audible voice of God. I can't explain it. And this is what I heard him say. It's like a deep, booming voice. He said, go on TV. I fell to my knees crying. It was so amazing. I said, what, Lord? I said, go on TV. And he spoke to my heart then. He said, yes. I said, I didn't have no TV experience, didn't have no equipment, didn't have anything. I said, when, Lord? He said, Sunday mornings. I mean, he just, I can't explain to you. I said, what time? He said, 6.30. So I said, where? He said, Channel 25, Hagerstown. No, will God actually speak to you that clear? I've got a book back there, How God Leads and Guides, 20 Ways That God Speaks. And then I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't have no, the church ain't got no money to do this. He said, you're not, the church ain't going to pay for it. You're going to pay for it. Now, my salary in them days, we had just started, the church was supposed to be $500 a week, and there was times the church couldn't afford to give me that. So here I'm getting a $500 salary, and I'm going to have to pay $250 a week for a half an hour program. Uh, and we didn't even have oil in our furnace at that time. Our tank was empty. And uh, before the end of the day, a guy that we had uh, led into the baptism, and he's actually the full gospel businessman in Thermont, Andy Fink, he, this is how great our God is. That's what we're going to talk about, how great our God is. And the Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that's in the world. You, you know, our God is a great God. He's an awesome God. He's a big God. He's able to do anything. And uh, so uh, we didn't even have fuel in our tank, but before the end of the day, Andy Fink pulled up, and he was a guy who went around and cleaned up people's yards and excavation. And he said, Pastor Mike, I, I, I've got two 55-gallon barrels full of fuel oil on the back of my truck. And uh, I don't know what to do with it. I said, I know what to do with it. Back up right here and fill up our tank. And he did. And uh, so I caught up Channel 25 in... They said to me, they, I said, I'd like to go. I didn't tell them everything because the fool water's off his mind. I said, because you got to let God confirm his word. We're not the one who does it. He does it. So I called him up, and I, I, I said to him, I said, I'd like to go on your TV station. I remember, I don't even have equipment. I have no experience. And he says to me, the, the person, it was a woman, a saleswoman. She said, I'm sorry, Reverend, we have no time available. Now, when I had told some people I was going to go on Channel 25 at 630 in the morning, they told me that it was stupid. That's too early in the morning. But I don't argue with God. Don't despise small beginnings. Uh, so I called them up, and they said, we don't have no time available. I said, well, go to your board, talk to them, call me back. So about two, three days later, they called back and said, you know, Sunday mornings, we come on at 7 o'clock, but uh, we're going to come on at 630 Sunday mornings for you. And uh, they did, we did, God did, and that was back in 1983. And uh, we've done, we, we have our own 24-hour TV broadcast and our work. That big satellite dish out back used to function. We're not using it now. The day will come when we will. And that was the beginning of our adventure. And you know, God supplied and God provided and God always will when you're in his will. You got to find out what the will of God is for you. Now, we know what his will is because it's in the book. But there's a lot of things that God will have you do that's not in the book because God is going to speak to you specifically. We've got a situation where uh, the children of Israel have been taken into captivity because of sin. They got in a mess because of sin. So uh, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Daniel, all of them were taken in by the Chaldeans, and it looked like it was over with because of sin. I'm telling you right now, it looked, for all practical reasoning, it looked like it was over with for America because of sin. But as God's people began to cry out, and I don't know if you took notice this week, 
There is a whole bunch of prayer going on. Franklin Graham, Kenneth Copeland. I mean, everywhere. People were praying. People were uh, having their church services, doing nothing but crying out. We did here about a month ago. We had nothing but a prayer service, and we gathered together, and there's like four or five congregations that came here, and we were crying out to God for a couple hours for America. And God heard our cry. Maybe other people weren't praying, but there was a lot of people praying. So God turned the tide. Uh, it's not Democrats against Republicans. As a matter of fact, you'll discover that literally uh, that Trump had less Republican white votes than what Romney did. And that was the silent majority. Many independents, many Democrats voted for him. And when the stats all come out, you're going to be absolutely surprised. It is a miracle what God did. There was a Democrat professional who came out whose technology is computer, and this is all going to come out, and it's beginning to come out now. Who, and, and, and it seemed to us that the opposite side were extremely cocky, extremely like we're going to win, we're going to win. And this Democrat came out, a woman who knows, who has a company and studied the, and said, listen, the software in these systems, these voting machines are corrupt, and they can take the votes. And so... You know, what are we going to do? How is this going to work? Well, it turns out the night of the election, if you would have watched, uh, as you watched Virginia, and actually Hillary did steal five states by this software. And if you looked at it, it was like they were both kind of neck and neck, and all of a sudden the last three hours, boom, exploded for, for Hillary in Virginia. And there was four other states exploded because if you look at that, the natural response, and, and they've, they've studied it for years, uh, she began to get 98% of the vote. For in other words, the stealing of the election began. But the turnout for Trump was so great that their software could not take it. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. I'm telling you, this is truth. And when this, this information is coming out, it's not, it's not the Republicans. This is coming out from a Democrat who had the software who was watching the whole kit and caboodle. And they got all the stats. But God is greater than the devil. Well, how do you know that God was, it wasn't God on Trump's side. God is against abortion. Listen to me. God is against the shedding of the innocent. The blood of the innocent. This nation has allowed 60 million unborn babies to be murdered. And, and, and this woman who was there, she believed up in, in late term abortion. That means up to the time of the birth to take the life of the child. God is against sexual perversion. God is, God is against taking the wealth from the wealthy. And giving it to the poor. That is thievery. Now don't misunderstand me. I'm not a wealthy person. You see the house I live in. But I don't want the wealth. Taken from the wealthy. Stowed from them. And given to me. Hello. God is the one who meets my needs. So it looked like it was really bad in the days. Of the children of Israel taken captive by Nebuchadnezzar. And here a man is, uh, you know, it, it, it kind of reminds me, somebody came to me here, uh, there, there's a guy by the name of Rich Wallen, Lance Wallen, Wallnow. Okay, so Ken told me about this guy. I never heard about prophetic word. Now, I, I tell you, people I know, uh, told me that Trump was going to win, even if it looked like uh, Billy, Billy, uh, Billy Deck told me uh, that a year ago the Lord told her that Trump would win. Uh, Henry Groover, a good friend of mine, had a visitation and said, e against all odds, Trump will win. I found some other prophetic. Now, I, I don't give a lot of credence to people prophetic words. I, I just go to the Bible, you know. Uh, but he said that he went to a gathering. It was basically African-American pastors, and him and two guys were white, and they went to this gathering. I guess if I'm getting this story correct, I'm not getting it all. But they were standing, and the Lord said to, to, to uh, Lance, bring your Bible with you. 
So he's in a meeting with Trump over a year ago, and the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to read Isaiah 45. Uh, you all need to read Isaiah 45. He said he didn't know if it was a rebuke or he was kind of trembling. He didn't know what it said. He opened it up and began to talk about Silas, how God had raised Silas up to break the gates of brass. I tell you, I read that to my family. We were all standing there just a couple of weeks ago with the hair standing up on the back of our necks. I said, whoa, this is a perfect description. Yeah, no one. Per, matter of fact, let me say this. People say, oh, he ain't a Christian. Well, that's strange because how many times do you have to pray the prayer of salvation before it takes? That man has probably prayed the prayer of salvation more than any politician I know. Uh, James Thompson, they said they prayed with him. Duck Dynasty people, they prayed with him. I mean, on and on and on, they've had him pray the prayer. How many had you prayed the prayer of salvation more than 10 times to get saved? Let me see your hands. You didn't have to, did you? You could pray it once if you meant it, and it was done. And so I'm here, I'm still having people on Facebook say, well, we got to pray he got saved. Well, he'll get saved. I said, well, how many times you got to get saved? But here's the thing. It's not about him. It's God. No, I'm telling you this. We could stop right there, people, and rejoice for the rest of this service. It's God. So here's a guy by the name of Nebuchadnezzar that it seems like he's so full of himself that he builds a, a, a humongous statue of gold and makes everybody bow down and worship him. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we're not bowing. And so he heated the furnace up seven times hotter than normal, threw them in. The guys who went to throw them in got burned to death. And they're in there, and there's the fourth man. The fourth man showed up. How I many you know the fourth man has showed up in America? He really has. He really has. Uh, we're, we're, you know, God's not done yet. Now, I believe the natural precedes the supernatural. What I mean by that is first the natural, then the supernatural. I, I believe what we just seen, this awakening in America, is just simply a glimpse of what we're going to see in the spiritual. I really do. I believe there's great hope now. Now those who love wickedness, they're upset. They're going to be mad. There are many people who have been deceived by the media. There, there's evil men working behind the scenes trying to disrupt everything, but God is greater. I'm telling you, God is greater. And so here in chapter 4, verse 1, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought towards me. What God actually move on the heart and raise up a leader? Now, remember, this guy's a pagan. This guy is, a, is not just a worshiper of false gods, but he's a worshiper of himself. And God shows up. <laughs> Listen, we're living in a historical, biblical moment where people have said, where's God? Spit on God. God doesn't exist. And all of a sudden, God just shows up. And now listen, Nebuchadnezzar is the one who's attributing this to God. He said, how great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I, Nebuchadnezzar, was of, at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. <laughs> Sounds like Trump Tower, don't it? I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the vision of my head troubled me. For in other words, God began to move upon his heart. God began to reveal himself to him, and he began to give him a warning. God says he tries to warn us with a dream, with a vision, yet men do not listen. So God's trying to warn Nebuchadnezzar, but Nebuchadnezzar doesn't listen. How many know that God can still move even when we don't listen? I got a book back there called I Need God Because I'm Stupid. And it's full of 83 examples of times I didn't listen to God. But God still helped me. I could write a bunch of more books like that, but I ain't going <laughs> to. Because we all miss God. If any man says he sins not, he's a liar and there's no truth in him. Now, I don't believe, I, I'm not saying we live unrighteously. I'm saying we press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. 
But when you think you're sinless, you are in big, big trouble. Now notice what it jumps, jump down here to verse, in verse 30. Well, actually, verse 29, this is 12 months after he had this dream and, and the Spirit of the Lord revealed it to him by the prophets. Surely the Lord God will do nothing but revealeth his secrets to his servants, the prophets. Uh, I know there was prophets out there that declaring that, uh, that, that it was the end of America. Uh, that the present president would declare martial law. He would stay in the office. I had dreams that showed me the Lord otherwise, not from my natural mind, but the Lord showed me in dreams and visions that he was leaving at the appointed time. Not early and not late. He was leaving at the appointed time. And so all of a sudden, God gives to Daniel the prophetic interpretation of the dream that Nebuchadnezzar has, and he warns him. He said, listen, he said, you better take heed lest pride get into your heart because what? It says, pride goeth before a fall and a haughty spirit before destruction. And, and it goes on here, the king spake at the end of the 12 months and said, is not this great Babylon that I have built for the house of the king Done by the might of my power and for the honor of my majesty. Now you, know, you know very well that it was God that gave Nebuchadnezzar the wisdom to do what he did. You know, God can give wisdom to natural people. Matter of fact, witty inventions are from the Lord. Uh, you know, God, I don't know why he does it, but he drops ideals and thoughts and dreams and hearts into the heart of men and women who do not know God and maybe never will know God. Because God is great. God, God can turn the hearts of kings. I, I, when I cried out to God back in 1975, February 18th, about 3 o'clock in the afternoon as I was getting ready to slip my wrist, I wasn't looking for God. And all of a sudden, as I'm weeping and wailing and crying, feeling sorry for self, the Spirit of God fell into that little bathroom, and the Navy is caught ahead, fell to my knees, and I cried out to Jesus Christ. And I got up off that floor, and no one had ever preached the gospel to me as far as, far back as I can remember, and I was a brand new creature, a brand new creation. And people said to me at times, well, Pastor Mike, why does God use you? Because he uses the foolish to confound the wise. I'm telling you, I think, I'm going to say this in love, I think that's a perfect description of Trump. God uses the foolish to confound the wise. Amen? I'm not confounded. <laughs> I'm amazed. Are you amazed this morning? He said, while the word was in, my, in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, now here's an audible voice, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from man, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over thee, until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the king of men, and giveth, listen, and he giveth it to whomsoever he will. You know, I, I, I really do to some extent. I think this is a description of what has happened to America in the last 20-some years. It, it's like the belief system. We've become like animals. I mean, I, and I'm not watching it on TV. You know, right now they're trying to proclaim that those who voted uh, for the man who just won, they're wicked, they're evil, they're full of hate, they're full. But who's out there burning? Who's out there pillaging? Who's out there killing? Who's out there destroying, not government property, but everyday hardworking business people? Come on, people. What insanity. You, you, you know... When, when Obama got in, and I was never against Obama, I, I, I'm for morals. But I didn't see that going on. The second time he won, I didn't see anybody doing that stuff. And so when the people speak, all of a sudden there's a group of people who are so full of hate. You know, one thing I found out as a pastor, have you ever experienced this? 
that a lot of the things I have been accused of for the last, I've been a pastor since 1977, the things I was being accused of, which I knew in my heart I was innocent because I examined my heart, the very people who were accusing me of it were the ones who were guilty of it. Didn't you learn as a parent, the kid that is defending and attacking the loudest is usually the one who's guilty. And they think through the clamor of their speech, they're going to convince you they're innocent. But God always brings light to the truth. Aren't you glad? I mean, God, isn't God great? And you know what? I found out as a pastor, especially being here since 1983, it's not people that keep us afloat. I know one of the families that they're here right now, they went to a certain and, and uh, there used to be uh, some people that came here, and, and they, they ran into them. And this was, you know, there's some people who used to come here back in about, nine, about 2000, 2002, or somewhere around there. And they, they, they left under strife and misunderstandings and hate. They left, and they ran, they ran into uh, the family. And uh, they, they, they were so angry. They were so frustrated. They were so mad. You know why? Because we're still here. Now, what kind of Christian would be mad and upset and frustrated because somebody didn't go down the tube? I mean, we don't even wish that for our enemies, do we? I mean, really, I, I, all I do, you know, we've been, cry, we've been crying out and praying and hoping that God wakes up the Clintons and they repent and they get gloriously born again and fill the Holy Ghost and they, begin to be, and they become circuit rider preachers. Wouldn't that be awesome? Declaring the greatness of God. We don't pray for the destruction of anybody, but see, that's how the devil works. The thief comes, the thief comes to steal to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Now here we are in the 21st century in modern technology. And it looks like this nation is gone because perversion is being promoted, immorality is being provo promoted, one world order is being promoted, globalization is being promoted, the destruction of the middle class, whether you know it or not, was happening, and all of a sudden God just says, hold on, I'm not done yet. No, just wait a moment here, I'm not done yet. And here, they, 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 you got the scale, and everybody, everybody, all the media, including Fox, and everybody's got their hands on the scale, and they're shoving it down for, for darkness. And God comes along with his little finger, and he says, I'm not done, and he flips the level. <laughs> Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. I'm telling you, God did this, man. And, and, and I, I'm, I'm telling you, even those who are full of sorrow right now because of what happened, God willing, give them a year from now and they'll be shouting. They'll be saying, hey, they, might, they might have too much pride to say, man, I'm sure glad he got in. <laughs> but it's not just him, it's the team of people. You know, who you hang around with reveals a lot about you. And there, there's a team of people being put into place right now that is going to turn things around. I cannot tell you what the number one threat of America, can I tell you what? It's not global warming. It's not. As a matter of fact, we could use some with some global warming. It's not global warming. It's not, it's not the environment. It's the hearts and the souls and the minds of our children. It is our children. And I tell you what, man, I, I thought I thought about my generation. We had it pretty rough but not compared to the generation of the day. And we, we, need, we need help in our homes. We need help in our inner cities, really. Uh, I mean, when this man was talking about how he's going to, and I believe he is, he's going to help the inner cities, I start crying. I literally did for our African-American brothers and sisters who are being raised in many homes with no daddies. And I'm thinking, we got to help them come out of their poverty. We got to help them come out of their violence. And it's not because they want that environment. That's what they've been raised in. We need to help them. We need to lift them up. Because, because we're all Americans. Amen? In this nation we are. And there's many other nations who wish they were Americans. Otherwise, they wouldn't be coming here by the hundreds of thousands. So notice what he says. 
he says all of a sudden, while the word was in, his, in the king's mouth, there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee. And see, God can give it to whoever he wants, can he? And they shall drive thee from men, and thy dwelling shall be with the beast of the field, and shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and seven times shall pass over you, until there know that thou most high rules in the kingdoms of what? Of man. There's times and there's seasons. We have come into, it's just, I mean, it's amazing. It? We have come into a new season. And I think it's caught us really, even those of us who saw prophetically this would happen, I think we're surprised by it. We didn't know we're going to have a season of refreshing. We are coming into a season of prosperity. We are coming into a season of restoration. For how long? I don't know. I believe until the harvest is brought in. And all of a sudden, God says, he says, uh, 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 until thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of man and giveth it to whomsoever he will, the same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar, the same hour. And he was driven from men and did eat grass like an oxen, and his body was wet with the dew of the heaven till his hair had grown like eagle's feathers and his nails like bird's claws. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, and I blessed the Most High. And I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generation. He lifted up his eyes towards heaven. I believe that's about what's going to happen here in America. We've rebelled against God for so many years. I believe we're going to see people begin to lift up their eye. I think they already are saying, oh, there's a God in heaven. How in the world? They're all saying, how could it be? How could it happen? How did we miss it? Well, it wasn't that their poles were so far off. It's this they didn't know. I'm telling you that the hand of God God was in this. That's why it didn't make no sense to them. Just like when, 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 when Lazarus was dead and Jesus came along and they said, Lord, he stinketh by now as if Jesus didn't know that. But he spoke and Lazarus came forth. And it was such a miracle that the religious leaders could no longer deny it. I'm telling you, this is almost like the resurrection of Lazarus. Come on, man. I, I, I have friends who are very well known in the prophetic ministry, and they missed it. They were speaking gloom and doom and death over America. It's the end. It's done with. Hillary's going to get in. Second Amendment rights are gone. Global one world order. Oh, don't misunderstand me. There is going to be a global one world order, but it's not yet. We don't know when Christ is going to return, but I do know that according to the book of James, there has got to be one more mighty outpouring of the Holy Ghost. He said that the Lord of the harvest is patient until he receives the early and latter rain. See, Dorothy, that's why you couldn't go home yet. Aren't you glad you didn't go home? You stuck around to see this? Because we're about to see God do mighty things. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. So here this man is. He's like an animal for seven seasons. Even his outward countenance and his eating habits and his lifestyle is just like an animal in a field. And all of a sudden, he comes to his right mind. Father, we prophesy that the mind of not just America, but the nations of the world, that many people are like going to be like the prodigal son who was in the pig pen. And they said, what in the world am I doing here? And they're going to get up and come home. They're going to come home to God. 
They're going to come home to the Lord. They're going to have a Jesus experience. Would you all believe that with me? Now, I'm telling you, there's great hope here. Listen, if God can do this with a man like this, if God can do this to a nation like what just happened in America, what do you think he can do in your home? Come on, what do you think he can do in your family? Isn't our God bigger than what the devil has done to our, our loved ones? Can't God just turn the whole mess around? Listen, if I would have been your son, you would have been my mom or my dad, and you, would have, you knew my lifestyle, how I was in trouble with the police, I quit school at 15 years old, I was a drug addict and alcoholic, first time I got drunk was when I was seven years old, at a Catholic wedding, woke up the next, puked my guts out, woke up the next morning with a hangover and began to drink from then on, smoked three and a half packs of cigarettes a day, took chewing tobacco, spit it in my pocket till it overflowed. I mean... I mean, I was whacked out. If you, if, you, if you knew me back in them days, I was called tooth because my front tooth got knocked out and I used to wear an old cowboy hat with a ski cap in the middle of it because it was too big and I wore a, 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 a chain of, a, a necklace of chicken bones that I had boiled in vinegar so I stunk when I came down the road and I had a speech impediment to where you could not understand what I said. I'm not exaggerating. And if you would have said, is there any hope for Mike because I was suicidal, I used to get on the other side of the road and I would, I would head straight on towards people and I would not move and they would have to get off the road. I mean, that's the kind of goofball I was. And if you would said, is there any hope for Mike, you would have said, oh, there ain't no hope for him. But in one moment, I'm telling you, in one moment, in one moment, when his presence came into my life, he turned it all around. And I came up off of that floor when I fell to my knees and I'm crying out to Jesus. I'm repenting of my sins. And I got up off that floor, a brand new creation. And I took my three and a half packs of cigarettes a day and I took my vodka and I took my drugs, put them down the toilet and I took the pornography, I got rid of it. I took all my rock music, Dr. Hook and the Medicine Band and, 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 and Pink Floyd and, and, and On the Far Side of the Moon and, and, and all of this other stuff I had and I just, nobody told me Jesus came in. I'm telling you, I think really America just had a Jesus moment. I really do. You may not see it, but I believe it. I believe it. I, I, I've been talking to other people, and they're not even Christians, and they got such great joy. It's like the end of the insanity. Can you imagine having lost his mind for, for seven years? And don't you think that was a glorious day when all of a sudden he lifts up his eyes towards heaven, and now he understands. And what does he understand? He begins to understand who God really is. I think America forgot who God was. I really do. But I think there's a great awakening. I'm telling you right now, I think this, I think this moment is almost as great as back there in 1776. I really do. I think this moment is just as great as, as, as when we, I remember as a little boy, I was a Catholic, raised, so I remember when Kennedy became president, I cried as a little Catholic boy. I remember the day he died. I'll never forget that. I wept. My whole family sounded like a house of wailing. I remember that day. I remember the day my dad worked on the Gemini Project and the Apollo Project. He worked for uh, uh, NASA. And I remember the day we landed on the moon. I'm telling you, I think what just happened is greater than those things. I really do. Now, we got to pray. You can't just stop and say, it's all done now. It's over with. No, we've got to pray for divine protection. We've got, we got to pray that, that God's will be fulfilled. And that once again, I'm telling you, I, how far do you think we ought to pray, Pastor Mike, where prayer can come back in the schools? Where the Bible can start being read in public again? Where we can celebrate Christmas without being afraid of being political. All this political correct junk can be thrown right out the door where men can use men's bathrooms and women can use women's bathrooms and you don't have to worry about your teenage girl having a, a pervert come in there and taking a shower with them. And those men who are twisted 
Because listen, you need help if you don't know what you are. I've told people for years, if you're confused of who you are, strip all your clothes off and stand in front of a mirror and whatever equipment you've got, that's who you are. And we just got to pray that your mind will get right. Nebuchadnezzar's mind was gone, but God gave it back to him. Lord, give America back its understanding. Well, let's finish up here. And it says, and at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is from generation to generation. And all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing. And he doeth according to his will in the army of heaven and among the inhabitants of the earth and none can stay his hand or say unto him what does thou <laughs> for in other words you can say say God what is happening he said don't worry I've got it under control I'm in charge I'm going to do it I can change the heart of a nation in a moment Whew. At the same time, my reasoning returned unto me, and for the glory of my kingdom, mine honor and the brightness returned unto me, and my counselors and my Lord sought unto me, and I was established in my kingdom, and excellent majesty was added unto me. Can America be great again? Can we be the industrial power of the world? Can we be a standard of righteousness? And common sense. Can we? Really you think that's possible? You think America could rise up out of the muck and the mire of the pigsty? See a lot of people don't understand what's happening. I, 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 we, uh, someone that used to come and preach for me from, from Kenya. He was here preaching some years ago. Back uh, I guess Obama had been in for about maybe three years. He says Mike you can't believe what's happening. Because I know Kenya was a Christian nation. He says, uh, our nation, we've been told two things. Number one, uh, the Mohammedan must become your religion. And you must promote homosexuality. This is an a, a African pastor, black pastor. I said, what? He said, yeah, Mike. I said, well, they're not going to do it. He said, oh, yeah, they're going to do it. I said, because the money that your nation gives to our country is going to be taken from us if we don't. Well, a lot of people don't really, this is true. Well, a lot of people understand this is what was happening. But it's all over with. <sighs> billions and billions of dollars being given to global warming UN nations. It's done with. That money will go into building bridges and highways and schools and restoring the inner cities. I'm telling you, it's going to happen. Our hope is Christ, but I believe this is Christ. I believe God put his little finger on the scale and said, let's tip this back the other way. Can we give the Lord a clap and a shout? Verse 37, now I, Nebuchadnezzar, praise and extol and honor the king of heaven, all whose works are truth and his ways judgment. And those that walk in pride, he is able to abase. It, it's, it, it really is. I, I really believe, I really do. I believe we come to a time, God forbid something would happen to uh, the, the president-elect. I don't believe it's going to stop it now. I believe it's begun. I believe the transformation of America has begun. But it's transformation we can believe in. It's righteousness. It's a husband and a wife that makes a marriage. It's children. It's parents that, at which we have not had the right for many, many years that every parent will have the right to put their children in whatever school they want. And they won't be stuck into some, I'm going to use the word hellhole. 
won't be stuck. You know, we're in a country, so we're not in the same environment. But you go, I've been into the city, inner cities of Philadelphia preaching. We've gone there. Tanya, you were with us in Baltimore. Go, I, I, I'd visit there and preach and pass out food and we'd sing and minister. But to live there, I believe that God is turning the tide. I really do. Could we lift our hands and thank him? Father, we just want to thank you for having mercy on our nation and the world. And we scan in the gap and we cry that this transformation that has begun, it would be completed. Lord, we don't know for how long. We don't know for how long. But Lord, we thank you for, for giving it to us. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we don't speak evil over those who, who we're trying to stop this. We, 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 we pray that you would convict them and that you would deliver them and that you would set them free. And Lord, but we, we pray now that you would give our, our new president and vice president and all of the cabinet members and everybody that you're going to be putting into office, Lord, that you would give them divine wisdom, divine instruction, divine direction, divine guidance, divine protection, divine provisions, divine health. Lord, we pray that you'd open up the windows of heaven and pour out blessings upon this nation that there's not room enough to re, re and Lord that you would lift up from the lowest to the highest Lord that that in Jesus name your prosperity would now overtake us your prosperity your abundance your righteousness Lord, we pray that what you've begun in the natural now would flow into the spiritual into a reformation of the church. Lord, that the compromise would go. The deceptions would go. The lies would go. Father, that truth would be exalted. And that Jesus would be lifted up for you. Said, if you be lifted up, you draw men unto you. And Father, I stand in the gap now for our families, for our children, our grandchildren, our relatives, our neighbors, our co-workers, our friends, Lord, we, we, and even our enemies. And I pray that you would do a mighty work, that there would be a shaking and a trembling and a quaking in the land, that, Lord, that, that you would do a mighty spiritual upheaval. And, Lord, that the prodigal sons and daughters would come running home the drug addicts would be delivered the alcoholics would be set free father that people whose minds are wrapped in darkness the light of heaven would shine upon them Lord we pray for peace and we pray for unity and we pray for brotherhood and sisterhood Lord that you would you would bring us together as one nation undivided under the authority of God and Lord, we thank you for it now. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand clap and a shout. <clears throat> Actually, I, I, I didn't even have this message until this morning. I, you know, I've been meditating on other parts of the word. It just came to me. Nebuchadnezzar, man. <laughs> we, we, God's doing something. God is doing something. Write this down in your diary if you keep one in your journal. This this is a, isn't it, Bill? Isn't this a radical change? I mean, didn't it look dark and bleak Tuesday night? But, but the morning came. The whole atmosphere, have any of you noticed the atmosphere is different? Wherever I go, there. Before that, there was like this oppression. Maybe it was just in my mind. But to me, I, I really believe there's been a, and, and even believe it or not, I, I, on YouTube, I've watched some of these secular uh, uh, journalists. They even seem to be happier. Some of them, now some of them are crying and they're upset and, you know, they're mad. But, but uh, I remember back when I was a little Boy, and I was so bad sometimes. I was so bad. My mom couldn't handle me. My dad would come home. I remember one time in particular, I had done something I wasn't supposed to, and I, I knew I was going to get beat. I knew it. So I went down. He came home. I knew he was coming to get me, and so I went downstairs, and he came down with a leather, his black leather belt, and put me over the bed and whacked, 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 whacked. I'm bawling. I'm crying. 
He walks out. But my dad could tell my laugh wasn't normal. My, my weeping wasn't normal. He could tell it wasn't real. It was put on. And so uh, when my dad walked out, I'm talking to my, my brother, Dennis. And I started laughing. Little boy. I started laughing. He said, Mike, how come you're laughing? And I dropped my drawers. And here I had another, I had two or three different pair of pants underneath of my old pants. So it was, I was all padded. And then my brother's eyes got real big. And he was looking behind me. I turned around, and there's my dad. He kind of knew something was wrong. So that time, all the pants came down. But you know, I was going to tell you is that there was times I was so confused, so frustrated, so upset when I was naughty. But I don't know why. And I'm not condoning being whipped by your dad. But after my dad would whip the devil out of me, peace came into my mind. It came out of discipline. For in other words, that whipping said, enough insanity. I tell you, I think America's just gone through a wonderful whipping. And I think sanity's coming. Now one thing, now I know some real strong liberals. They hate this man's guts. I've seen them, guess what? I didn't laugh at them. The Bible says, weep with those who weep. And rejoice with those who rejoice. And so... Uh, I got up on the hill, you know, I take a lot of single men in, and uh, some of them guys are just really, they were really gun hoeing against, you know, Trump, and I didn't, I didn't say a word to them. They probably thought I was going to come up and laugh at them and mock them, I didn't, and I just came up, oh, I walked real softly, didn't say a word about the election. You know why? You don't have to say a word. You don't have to say a word. But they start crying, just take them in their arms, pat them on the back and say, I understand. But it's going to be okay. Tell somebody it's going to be okay. Amen. Well, I'm telling you right now, what I like to do is I like to pray with you if you need prayer this morning. I, I don't know. I, I really think this.